Good morning, everyone. This is Attorney Davis with Davis Legal Center, and I'm the managing attorney here for um, this firm. So this week's Tip Tuesday is all about post-conviction work. Um, so I think a very important facet of the work that we do here at my firm is post-conviction and appeals. There are, this video is going to be like a two-week, a two-part video as well because I just want to talk about post-conviction this week and then we'll shift gears and we'll talk about uh, the work that my office do, does for appeals. So post-conviction is different from an appeal in the respect that, um, well obviously the name, uh, a person has to be convicted and post means after a conviction. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of people of the public tend to get confused about post-conviction work is that there are a lot of deadlines associated with post-conviction, whether it be state or federal. So if you are seeking um, to get some relief from the, from the lower level court uh, for post-conviction purposes, you really have to keep that in mind because um, it is very strict, very, very strict. Um, deadlines associated with post-conviction work. The only thing that doesn't have a deadline would be a post-conviction motion to correct an illegal sentence. Otherwise, um, uh, ineffective assistance of counsel post-conviction motion, uh, motion to vacate a sentence, uh, motion to withdraw plea, those are all time barred here in the state of Florida as well as uh, federal court. Time barred let me go back and correct that. When I say time barred, I mean that they have strict deadlines associated with those types of post-conviction motions. Again, the only one that doesn't have a deadline would be a motion to correct an illegal sentence for obvious reasons. Um, one of the main things I think that people tend to get themselves into is if they go to trial um, and lose or if they enter into a plea, um, then they want to go back and seek relief from the court if they had an unfair process. Um, if that is the situation, well, depending upon the facts of the situation, the main thing that post-conviction and appellate attorneys utilize to assess that would be the record, the record on appeal. And that could be in state or federal court. Um, if I'm a person that is incarcerated and in this position, um, I want to make sure that you know I'm understanding my process to a T and if you don't have um, if you don't understand your process or something like that you need to let it be known because there's a court reporter that's present at every proceeding in state and federal court and um, there, there's a court reporter that's present there for a reason to take down what everyone is saying so that would be the defendant or the accused, the attorneys of record, as well as the judge. And the court reporter's job is to make sure that we have a very accurate record in the event that someone wants to exercise their right to appeal or for post-conviction purposes. So I think the biggest takeaway without making this video extremely long is that understand that you have a post-conviction and an appellate process. They are two separate things. I think a lot of times people try to put them together and they're not meant to be together. I will talk about appeals on another video, but for purposes of this video for post-conviction cases, you can file post-conviction cases whether you go to trial or whether you enter into a plea. You can. There are very strict deadlines, but you can absolutely do it. So if you want to learn more about the work that my firm does for our post-conviction and appellate cases, um, definitely stay connected with us. The link is in the bio. Have a great week. Bye, everybody.